Accidents happen. Small things happen. So let's see today what my personal medical kit is all about. Okay, so my first aid kit. This is the kit that uh, I could take on a bigger trip. Um, but right now it's always in my house, always in the same spot, so I know exactly where it is and know where to find it. It's made, this, this uh, bag is made by the North Face, and I believe it's called their Base Camp Small Duffel, but it is in fact the large small duffel. There's also a small small duffel which is about this size, so this is just a little bit bigger. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty cool material. Uh, as you can see, it's it's water just uh, pretty much rolls off. Let me just take a second to dry this off a little bit. Um, <clears throat> this thing is designed um, to hold your toiletries when you go on trips. And that's also why it is pretty water uh, repellent, which uh, I, I think is, is very nice, because this really feels dry now. So it's a pretty cool material. Okay, I have added a strap. You see there are these nice little loops you can attach more gear to, should you desire to do so. Um, and to that I've just added a strap in this sort of nylon braided material. You know the stuff probably. You find it around binoculars and that kind of stuff. Alright, so we've got that. Now, attached to that, um, that strap with which you can carry it uh, is a fixed bladed knife. And now you might wonder why exactly carry a small fixed blade knife. Well clearly for cutting purposes. Um, I wouldn't really cut someone's clothes with this. But you can cut things to size, you can cut tape, that kind of stuff. And in an emergency uh, soldiers have been known to make splints out of knives like this. And also, <clears throat> this one's by one on one ink, um, there is cord wrapped around the handle, so you have quite a lot of cord. That is the only, I guess, well, maybe one of two survival style items on my medical kit. Uh, clearly, cutting clothes and stuff, use those good scissors with a little ball welder to the end so you don't cut into someone's skin, but as I said, this is not a survival kit, but that's a bit of a survival item. Secondly, here, I have a Phoenix flashlight. And to be honest, I have forgotten the model number of this one. Um, <clears throat> it is pretty bright. Um, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> Let me take a sip of water there. It has two brightness settings. I always have it on the brightest setting. And this is just yellow um, electrical tape. It's always useful to have. Also, it keeps it in the uh, little holster. I have looped the wrist strap through the holster to uh, to keep that in place um, so that if something happens it falls out it can't actually get lost. Finally here's a Grimlock uh, it's easy to attach and if you want to put something else on your bag uh, you always have it. So that's the bag on the outside now we're going to open this up and we're going to see what is on the inside. These are pretty sturdy YKK zippers and uh, in here, whoops, there we go, is the kit. The kit that I, I use for my um, medical purposes. So let's, let's go through this. I'll try to do this as quickly as I can so as not to bore you to death. First of all, there is a strap with a very strong metal hook, uh, which is very cool. There is Velcro on, on here. Uh, and this uh, this kit actually came with a small mirror. As I said, it's for toiletries, so you can put this up, and then you put the mirror on the Velcro, and then you can look at your what, what you're doing, shaving, uh, brushing your teeth, etc. Um, so that's quite cool. I took out the mirror, I put that in my survival tin, but um, it's not a bad idea to carry a mirror, especially if you're by yourself. You can check out wounds and areas that you can't see if you don't have a mirror on you. What I like about this is that I can hang this thing up when it's open and stuff will not fall out. So it may make it easier to navigate and see what's in there. Okay, so what do I have in here? Well, first of all, this is the most ridiculous pair of scissors I could find. Um, but it actually works pretty well. So if I need to cut tape, 
you see it, it, it stays open quite nicely. Um, you need to cut tape, bandages, band-aids, etc. Uh, you can. The only thing is it doesn't have a rounded off end. I mean it's not particularly sharp but to cut through someone's clothes you could do it in a pinch because this doesn't have a sharp tip but I would ideally add one of those scissors, a pair of scissors with a little ball welded there so that you don't cut into someone's skin. Alright, here I'm not going to take those out but are three safety pins, always useful, keeping a bandage in place, keeping a triangular bandage in place, etc. Um, this is a uh, hemostat, um, so if someone has a ruptured artery, um, if you can find it, you can clamp it shut with this and then uh, the bleeding will stop. Now clearly that is a very serious uh, injury and that is best left to professionals but if you are somewhere in the field one of your buddies gets hurt there's not going to be medical assistance soon you know so hemostat um, <clears throat> here I have five rolls of bandage that's just very standard uh, the stuff you buy in a drugstore uh, it's fairly elastic it's pretty useful stuff here I have two pairs of gloves, nitrile gloves, this is not latex. Um, two pairs is always useful. If someone is assisting you, you can say, here's an extra pair of gloves, put these on. Uh, in this world, you never know if someone is infected, you know, so then you, you should be pretty safe. Here I have two long needles. Uh, these are 21 gauge needles, and these are 50 millimeters long. Uh, needles can be useful. If you need to puncture something, um, it could be useful for an emergency tracheotomy. Um, it could be used... Uh, I'm, I think these should be long enough if someone has a pneumothorax um, to um, make sure the air can escape from your chest so that you, you don't actually compress your lungs. But that is complicated medical stuff and that should only be done by a professional. But if you have a professional, he doesn't have the equipment, then at least you can give him something to do it. Um, and in there should also be a 10cc syringe. You know, you can suck stuff up with this. Um, you can do stuff with this, even if you're not a medically trained professional. Okay, um, here I have something that you're going to love, I'm sure. Uh, somewhat survivalish. This is just an old credit card type card with duct tape, a couple of feet of duct tape wrapped around it. Duct tape will keep a wound together. It's not clean, it's messy, it's ugly, but if you're in an emergency and you're bleeding out, duct tape can help. I would not recommend it if medical uh, professionals are five minutes away, but you know, if you're in the mountains, there's no one in the area, you could use it. Here I have a small empty plastic vial. Um, I think I'm going to put some painkillers in here, but for now it's empty. If you have a sample of something, for example, imagine someone gets bitten by a tick. You can remove the tick, you can put it in here, you can have it analyzed, for example. You know, you can always put stuff in here. If someone loses a tooth, you could put it in here. Uh, someone loses a small bit of his finger, etc. <clears throat> Here's a pretty nifty tool that I like. I got this from eBay in a, um, an emergency kit. Uh, this is a, a ballpoint pen, um, but also a pretty bright LED, uh, and I don't think it's particularly bad at all, to be honest. Light is always good, uh, and the nice thing about this is that it's small and it's bright, but it's not too bright, so you can look into someone's eyes, see if the pupils dilate, um, or sorry, see if the pupils constrict, if they don't, brain injury, etc. So you can do some diagnostics with that. Here you have... These are just um, uh, tweezers. Um, I have, they are very sharp, so uh, they're very good, very pointy. I will not remove the, the um, uh, tape, the electrical tape I put around that. That's just so that I don't stab myself accidentally. Very sharp, so very good for removing splinters. You can heat this up you know, to disinfect it. It's all metal, etc. And this tape is just to keep it shut so it doesn't take up as much space. All right. Here we have a, uh, uh, this is all uh, Dutch, um, it's just a first aid dressing that um, is basically cotton balls with bandage 
attached to it. If you need to cover up a wound very quickly, it's sterile. Open it up, put it on there, wrap the stuff around the wound, and you can stop bleeding quickly. Um, always useful to have a few of those. These are just gauzes, 5x5 five five centimeters. Uh, good to put on a wound and then put bandage around it. Here I've got a, uh, a burn dressing. Um, personally, burns, I think, uh, what I was taught is that it's best to leave them uncovered uh, and have medical professionals look at it, but I guess if you are again in the field in a pinch, there is nothing else you can do. Um, you could cover it up. A lot of water first. A lot, a lot, a lot of water. And then just see what you can do. Okay, here I have a very small notepad. Um, it says date and number. If there are multiple injuries, people who are injured, uh, you can make notes. Drugs you have administered, treatment you have given, what you suspect is the case, broken back, broken spine, broken neck, etc. Um, those kinds of things. Alright. Here I have a simple emergency rescue blanket. Uh, keep people warm. Um, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's very simple, but it's flat. You know, these astronaut blankets. Uh, good when people are cold, hypothermic, etc. And also for yourself, if you are cold, I mean, if you fall in the water, you got something. Electrical tape is one of God's greatest gifts to mankind because you can do so much with electrical tape. It's slightly elastic. Um, it remains sticky, so if you put it on something, you take it off, you can put it on something else, you can recycle it. Uh, it's, it's very, very useful stuff. I chose red here. If necessary, you can use it for signaling. Um, but all kinds of applications. And yes, I mean, even covering up small wounds if, if there's absolutely nothing else you can do. Here I got a combination. This is just um, a medical uh, that sort of cloth tape. And this is just a disinfectant, happens to fit perfectly well in here, so, you know, save some space, keep things organized. Uh, disinfectant, clearly always good to have, and uh, the tape, this tape, is very strong, and there's a lot of it on this roll, so always useful to have. Here we got some more tape, this is the sort of, that sort of uh, crepe uh, paper tape, uh, very useful for um, closing off bandages, making sure they stay in place, etc. Uh, quite nice, and you can tear this with your hands, which is very useful. You can tear this with your hands, but it's a lot more difficult. So for that, I would use either my pair of scissors or my trusty little 101 ink knife. Clearly, in an emergency situation, use scissors, because that's a smart thing to do. Here we have a, um, um, a, a, a mask. This is the sort of thing you can use. You can put this in someone's mouth, and then give them mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. Um, the thing is, when you give someone CPR and mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, you can expect them to vomit, and that will end up in your mouth. So, considering that is not the most appealing of thoughts, this kind of stuff, you don't have to actually be in physical contact with the mouth uh, of, the, of the patient. You don't know if they're infected with something, you don't know what you know what's going on. And also, uh, imagine someone has fallen on the ground and has cardiac arrest because he has ingested some type of toxin. Uh, then you may not want to be in direct contact with his mouth too. So always good to carry uh, one of these things with you. And of course, that only makes sense if you actually know how to do CPR. But even so, if you don't, you can always give it to someone who does know how to do that. Triangular bandage. 1001 applications. Uh, you can roll it up, turn it into a regular bandage, you can support someone's arm with it, um, you can make a, a, a sort of tourniquet with it, you can do all kinds of stuff with this, so super useful, very versatile. Here we have a couple of antiseptic swabs, always useful, you know, always good to clean wounds with, uh, very easy to use. Here I have a bunch of alcohol prep pads, it's quite a bunch of them. Um, you could use this as a survival tool to the extent that they will also burn. So not only do they disinfect wounds, they burn, and then you can start a fire if necessary. But I don't have anything in here to actually create a spark with. As I said, it's not a survival kit, it's really medical. Okay, um, then here you have a surgical mask. If you really have to do something serious in the field or you think there's a risk of infection, you can always wear that. Here we got some more bandage. You, you can't really have too much 
bandages and band-aids. There's no such thing. The same goes for tape. There's always purposes for it. This is an underlay. You can put this under someone uh, if someone has to give an IV drip, uh, if they have to do something. Uh, blood may splatter and if they have an open wound, blood may splatter. It's just sort of that surgical paper. You just put it under them. Uh, it's not sterile, obviously, but you know, it's just to <laughs> have them not bleed on you, so to speak, or on themselves. Um, here we have a tourniquet. Uh, very simple. You've got a serious injury. Uh, maybe a, an artery has been uh, cut. Uh, blood can literally squirt out. Put this around someone's arm or leg, and then the, the bleeding downstream should lessen and stop. Um, these things cannot be put on indefinitely. Uh, you can actually cause damage to the extremities and clearly it doesn't work uh, in, in some cases it doesn't make a lot of sense to put this around someone's neck because then they will choke and die uh, but arms and legs this stuff can work um, until there is professional help and again keep checking them for cyanosis so, so blueness of the extremities um, and make sure that you know that is not happening because they can lose a limb if you keep this on but, you know, for short stuff, you can do this, and also you could use this in combination, now I have to dig through all the stuff here, here we go, you could use this in combination with that hemostat, stop the bleeding, then clamp the artery, it can be difficult to see the artery, because there's a lot of blood, but, you know, um, good to have one of these things, they're not that expensive, and they do actually work. Um, here I have some more... Um, sterile gauze. This, these are two very big patches and these are two uh, smaller 5x5s, five five so that's 2x2 two two inches. Um, sterile, packaged. The reason I put all of this in Ziploc bags is that this stuff is pretty water repellent, but should you drop it in water or whatever, uh, at least all your stuff won't deteriorate, because then you're pretty much naked. Okay, one item that's in here that could be considered a survival item is a rain poncho. Now I don't expect to wear this poncho for the rest of your life, it's pretty flimsy but you can use it for a host of things. Um, use it as an emergency blanket. I have my space blanket but what if two people get hurt, right? What if two people are hypothermic? Wrap it around them. Uh, put it under someone who is injured. You want to not move someone if it's not absolutely necessary, especially if you suspect uh, spinal damage or uh, damage, broken neck, broken back. But if it is, I mean, if someone is on a rail track and you see a train coming on, you don't think you'll be able to stop the train in time, you may have to move someone. It's nice if you have something to put them on. Even if this is not much padding, they're not just on the ground, they're not in rainwater or whatever. So, I mean, and clearly, if you are caught unawares by a huge rainstorm, you have something to stay dry. And it doesn't take up that much space, so there you go. Alright, well we're almost there. All that's left now is these two pouches in the top. I'm just going to pull everything out and then I'll go through it. Um, there we go. Here I have some waterproof um, plasters, band-aids. Uh, it can be very useful to have that. They're bigger ones and smaller ones. Um, very useful to have because they're waterproof. These are big ones, waterproof band-aids. Um, this is an assortment of regular band-aids. Um, what I would um, add to this are some, I believe in English you call them dovetails. Those little things you put over bigger lacerations um, to, to keep them close. Um, but these are a bunch of band-aids, plasters in various shapes, sizes, etc. As I said, you can't have too many. So carry big ones, smaller ones, the big ones that you cut to size yourself and you should be pretty safe. Um, also in here is this little thing, little first aid booklet. I have taken first aid training, um, but you can't know everything, especially in an emergency situation, you can be a little stressed, you know when someone is, I don't know, dying, for example. Um, it's good to have just a little bit of information on, on what to do when someone is poisoned, when they have a small wound, when they are bleeding, when they faint, etc. So it's just a little reminder for yourself, never hurts to have something like that with you. Okay, and then finally in this zippered compartment, and after that we're done, um, 
I have just a few things. Here we have soft compresses, um, always good, um, you know, to, to, to put on wounds, to, to, to cover them, etc. Can give a little bit of relief. Um, here we have more band-aids in various shapes and sizes. As I said, can't have too many of them. Um, here I have a very nifty little thing called a Fresnel lens. Uh, you can check that out on um, uh, Wikipedia if you don't know what a Fresnel lens is. It's pretty nifty, uh, but what basically what this is is a magnifying glass, but it is completely flat. Um, and you can use this uh, to magnify, and that's very good if you have a wound uh, you can just magnify it, see uh, see it a bit better if you have a splinter, etc. And it's super flat. And I guess in an emergency situation, if there is sun, with this you could also start a fire if you focus the sunbeams. So um, you got your bandages. That's probably that will catch fire at some point. Um, so you have some options. But mainly I use that to study wounds that I can't, you know, see with the naked eye very well. And finally, you got this stuff, fantastic uh, bit of stuff, mole skin. If you have blisters on your feet, you have to walk on, you can't stop. You cut it out, uh, cut it to size, you put it on the, uh, the, the blister. I mean, blisters are typically a good idea to pop them, um, but sometimes you can't if you have blood blisters or stuff like that. Uh, and then you can cut this to size. It has a sticky side in one end, stick that on the blister, and this is soft, so it will make sure that you're not rubbing against socks or shoes or whatever, and that can give a lot of relief. So I always have this in there as well. I prefer this to those type of blister plasters, the sort of plasticky um, soft things. I, 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 for me that doesn't work so well, but this stuff usually does. So there you have it. Uh, a lot of contents. I'm not a medical professional, so don't don't take my word for anything. Uh, seek seek training if you're really interested in this sort of stuff. Um, for me, this is comfort. I know I have this. I know that I can take care of pretty much every small injury that that takes part around the house uh, with this thing. Um, I can take it with me on a trip. I am pretty well prepared. Yes, there are many things I could add: uh, analgesics, maybe some uh, antihistamines. Uh, maybe some anti uh definitely some type of anti-diarrhea drug. I mean, I would add some drugs when I would go on a trip, but in the house, I have that in a little medicine cabinet, and I don't put it in this kit. Um, also, not to clutter it too much. So, there you go. Um, I hope you found this useful. Uh, when it comes to medical training, first aid training, take it. There is not really an excuse not to. I know it sometimes costs money uh, and you have to invest some time, but if that means you can really take care of your loved ones when they are injured, uh, then I would say that no matter what the cost, it's worth it. Right? It's worth it to be able to take care of you, the, the, the people that are important to you and even yourself. So that's my kit. That's my story. Hope you like it. Individual first aid kit, IFAC. Um, I, uh, hope this may have given you some ideas of stuff you may want to add to yours and if you don't have one make one there is no again there is no excuse not to have at least some of the basics you can always afford a one roll of bandage and a little box of band-aids and that alone is going to give you mental comfort i think so there you have it i hope this was useful and uh, i'll see you later bye bye